Law of Acceleration, Part 2. So we've already discussed the Law of Acceleration a bit and mentioned that it explains the connection between uh, forces and acceleration. But before we uh, go any further to uh, get into the specifics of the Law of Acceleration, uh, I want to emphasize the difference between acceleration and speed because uh, often those two related concepts are confused. So let's think about uh, this example. Let's say uh, an airplane is, is taking off, so it starts on the runway and it picks up speed. And uh, during takeoff, it has a large acceleration because the speed is increasing rapidly. Now, in mid-flight, when the uh, airplane is going at a constant speed, that speed may be quite large, but because the speed is constant, there's no acceleration. So the acceleration is really related to the change in the speed. Now, uh, another more animation related uh, example of this is when we think about uh, spacing. So a falling object, uh, the spacing is larger and larger because the object is gaining speed and so we know uh, there's a direct connection between spacing and speed. On the other hand, uh, the change in the spacings, that's what uh, we refer to as acceleration. So uh, because speed is indicated by spacing, the change in speed, which is the acceleration, that is indicated by the change in the spacings. For falling motion, that change happens to be a constant uh, two-thirds of an inch per frame. So the spacing of a falling object gets uh, longer by two-thirds of an inch uh, with each frame. Now here's another uh, way of viewing the distinction between uh, speed and acceleration. If we look at the motion graph, uh, well, for an object that's rolling uh, slowly at a constant speed, we have this uh, curve that's not very steep. But if it's uh, going faster, so the spacings are larger, then uh, this uh, motion curve will have a steeper slope. Now, with acceleration, something that has a small acceleration, the motion curve, because it's accelerating, it's not a straight line, it's, it has a curvature, but if the acceleration is small, the curvature is small because the speed is not changing very rapidly. But when we have a large acceleration, then we have a lot of curvature in uh, this uh, motion curve. Now, getting back to forces, uh, part of the law of acceleration says that uh, if we have the same object, the more force that we apply to it, the larger the acceleration. So let's say we have a, the same block, we apply a large force, we get a large acceleration, we apply a small force to the same block, we get a small acceleration. That's uh, fairly intuitive. Uh, Another part of the law of acceleration is that uh, the more massive an object, and in this case you can uh, think of mass as being directly related to weight, there's a little bit of a subtlety in that, uh, we'll discuss that in another uh, tutorial, but consider these cases where there's a, a wood block and a stone block, uh, if we push on the wood block uh, it accelerates, if we push on the more massive stone block with the same force, there's going to be a smaller acceleration. Again, I think that's uh, also fairly intuitive. Now, there are many situations when we have a constant force. So, uh, in that case, the constant force uh, pulls or pushes on an object with a constant magnitude and it pulls in a constant direction. So two common examples, well uh, the force of gravity is a constant force 
and it turns out that sliding friction is a nearly a constant force. So uh, here we see the, this uh, girl sliding to a stop, and uh, in this case, the frictional force that's causing her uh, speed to change uh, is, it turns out, uh, fairly constant. This is uh, actually a result um, discovered by Leonardo da Vinci. Now, the um, connection with what we've discussed in terms of the odd rule is that uh, the odd rule applies whenever the net force is constant. So going back to the example uh, of the girl that's uh, sliding, uh, we, besides the frictional force, there's the force of gravity and the support force of the ground. Uh, those two are, are in balance, so we don't even have to consider them. Uh, there's the uh, frictional force, and we just said that that's uh, constant. Uh, in that case, the net force is constant, and so the uh, spacings follow the odd rule. Uh, so, just repeating the forces here. Constant, the support force, balanced by the weight, leaving only the constant uh, frictional force. Now, the, um, to complete the law of acceleration, um, we can say that if the net force equals the object's weight, then the acceleration is the same as when we have falling motion. On the other hand, if the net force is greater than the weight of the object, then the acceleration is greater than when an object is falling. And uh, conversely, if the net force is less than the weight, then the acceleration will be uh, less than when we have falling motion. So one more example here with sliding. We have uh, an ice block sliding, so if there's very little friction, then the acceleration uh, will be small, and so the change in the speed is uh, not very much from frame to frame. But uh, if we have a brick, uh, which is rough, so there's a lot of friction as it's sliding, then uh, there is a large change, uh, and if the friction is larger than the weight, then um, this slowing in will um, happen faster than the slowing in, like when we throw the brick upward and it goes to an apex. Now, uh, the situation is not quite so simple because uh, there are lots of cases when the forces are not constant. So like a character pushing on something, they may not necessarily always push with the same uh, amount of force. Another example is, in falling motion, we have not just the force of gravity, but uh, when something is falling uh, fast enough, there's also a significant air resistance, and uh, we'll see that air resistance force is not constant. The faster an object moves, the more uh, air resistance force we have, so uh, that, that varies with uh, how fast something is, is moving. Now, we can still use the law of acceleration when the force is not constant. The only thing that uh, changes is the, that uh, if the force is not constant, then the acceleration is not constant. But we still have the relationship that um, the greater the force, the greater the acceleration. So let's think of this in terms of uh, what animators call texture. So we said that when the force is constant, the spacings uh, follow the odd rule, as you see in this first uh, part. <clears throat> On the other hand, if the force is not constant and it's increasing, then the spacings uh, change faster than uh, with the odd rule. So we might have something like, like in this example. Uh, conversely, if the force is changing but decreasing, then uh, the acceleration is decreasing, and then the spacings uh, tend to be, become um, more even. And uh, so here, the, the force is decreasing, and so the spacings are uh, almost 
becoming the same. Eventually, if the force goes to zero, then we have uniform motions and the spacings will be constant and we'll have uh, no texture at all in the timing and spacing. So uh, to summarize, acceleration is not the same as speed, so uh, be sure to keep that distinction. Uh, the greater the force, the greater the acceleration. That's part of the law of acceleration. Uh, another part is that for a given force, the smaller the mass, uh, the greater the acceleration. If the net force is larger than an object's weight, then the acceleration will be greater than in falling motion. And if its uh, net force is smaller than the object's weight, then the acceleration is um, less than in falling motion. For constant forces, the acceleration is constant, and that means the spacings will follow the odd rule. And if the forces are not constant, then uh, we have texture in the timing and spacing, as, as we just saw. The um, spacings will change um, faster than the odd rule if the force is increasing, and they um, will become more uniform if the force is uh, decreasing. So that's the law of acceleration. Uh, we'll be using that quite a bit as we consider various types of motion, um, such as uh, falling with uh, air resistance, uh, which is a very interesting, um, useful example of that. So we'll uh, see some of that in the upcoming tutorials. So see you then.